It's the end of the year, and we're here to make some AI predictions. 2025 is going to be a big one, everybody. And who predicted that they would just skip O2 entirely? Yes, OpenAI announced a new model, a foundational something called O3, and we're going to let you know why that's exciting to everyone. It's a special kind of end-of-year explosion of AI for humans. It is the end of 2024, Kevin. We are here. We just saw last week, O3, OpenAI's new uh, frontier model get teased. And maybe we are done with the GPT uh, nomenclature and we've moved on to something else. It is weird that it's O3 instead of O02, which would make a lot more sense. They, they said out of respect for some other product or something that was No, there's O2 a big or? British telecom company named O2. So literally, they just said, screw it. We're going to just skip over O2 and go straight to O3. We're going to talk about that next frontier model, which you would think logically maybe should be called O2, but out of respect to our friends at Telefonica and in the grand tradition of OpenAI being really, truly bad at names, it's going to be called O3. Surprise, surprise, the line goes up. And I think what's really interesting is that even the the quickest, the there's an O3 mini model, which kind of outperforms the O1 model in some benchmarks that we all have access to today. We all predicted that, okay, you know, scaling was going to go up and now inference compute or reasoning was going to go up. And, and here it is. It's getting faster. It's getting cheaper. It's getting more capable. That's right. And I think one of the most interesting things that came out of that O3 announcement is the fact that it scored the, the highest compute version, which I think takes a lot of compute. There's O3 low, O3 medium, and O3 high compute, which means how much actual uh, compute time you throw at the thing. The O3 high compute scored an 85% on what is kind of known as like the premier benchmark in the world of AI. It's called the ARC AGI test. In fact, they even had the guy come on the live stream, who, who one of the organizers of ARC AGI, to kind of talk about how impressive that is. ARC AGI version one took five years to go from 0% to 5% with leading frontier models. However, today, I'm very excited to say that O3 has scored a new state of the art score that we have verified. On low compute for uh, O3, it has scored 75.7 on Arc AGI's semi-private holdout set. Now, this is extremely impressive because this is within the uh, compute requirements that we have for our public leaderboard, and this is the new number one entry. So, Kev, I think in general, we don't have our hands on this yet. It's red teaming now, so it's going to go out to everybody. It'll be really interesting to see what it means for the plebs like us who are just you know, doing the dumb things that we do with AI rather than trying to advance it. But this seems like a good opportunity since it's end of year, it's the day after Christmas, to kind of talk about what we think might happen next year. We did an episode a little while ago where we talked about trends, but now I think it's kind of worth predicting a few things, right? Like what are what are some predictions that we think that might come up in 2025? And it's time for a new theme song. It's AI predictions in 2025. It's time for a new theme song it's ai for humans predictions for ai in 2025 so my first prediction involves weirdly something that we haven't talked a lot about in the show but that's crypto and my first prediction is that you're going to see a Superman's lot of dog yeah, no, not crypt, not crypto. Which, by the way, the trailer does look pretty good. I'm kind of back in on James Gunn's Superman. Um, crypto, I think, is going to be kind of tied to AI at least for the first six months of the year. There's been a lot of really interesting things happening there, and the one thing I'll say is I think that crypto provides AI this kind of weird, sometimes very shady. Let's be clear, crypto is a very shady industry but also provides a lot of builders like interesting um, money right away to conce conceivably put into projects. And I think there is a world where crypto is going to kind of like tie itself to at least some of those edge cases of AI. And I expect we're going to see more of that, at least in the first six months. If you understand crypto cycles, like next year could be a big year for crypto. It could also crash. This is the way crypto goes. But I think in the first six months of next year, you're probably going to see more AI plus crypto stuff. For the uninitiated, the AI plus crypto we've seen thus far, Gavin, seems to be um, using AI to embody some sort of personality that will tweet or make decisions on yes. behalf of something that is tethered to a token. If people are gathered around with the family 
for the holidays or for the new year and they go, what's this AI and crypto thing? Like, how do you explain how they could be related next year? Yeah, so the basic way I would explain it is right now, there's a lot of people in crypto talking about AI agents and they're not really AI agents in the way that we've talked about in the show. An AI agent, the way we've talked about in the show, goes out and does stuff for you, like actively will be able to book a trip or something like that. In this instance, they're talking about what essentially are AI personalities, right? They're, the most famous one was the goat coin that, that came out uh, out of a, of a handle named at Truth Terminal. That one is kind of like been up and down, but it also, if you're familiar with Fartcoin, which a lot of people may have heard about now, Fartcoin was based on one of Truth Terminal's tweets, right? So that was an AI personality that tweeted out stuff and has been connected to basically an LLM. What you're starting to see now is a little bit more people trying to do things that are a little bit more interesting. There's a new token that just came out. By the time this comes out, it could be a rug. And this is the most important thing to understand about, about crypto in general is that so many crypto projects just go to zero. So I really can't, in good good instance, tell anybody to invest in this. But a company um, just started up called, I think it's called Yes, No Error or something like that. Mark Andreessen uh, at PMarka on X had asked about this idea of creating a company that could go through and use O1, and now maybe O3, to check a bunch of scientific papers for errors. So a crypto guy, and this guy doc, is a docs guy, so somebody out there created a, a, a very simple you know, AI thing that could do this. And the way he pays for it and the way you pay for it, it to check this is you use a, a crypto coin. And so like, that's the kind of thing I could kind of see starting to happen a little bit more going forward. Hmm. Oh, that's really fascinating. Yeah, for me, the end of this year has been pretty transformative personally when it comes to coding. Again, we thought AI was coming for factory jobs and we lamented the workers in the warehouse. And then it was like creatives panicking. Oh no, this is writing emails and prose and marketing copy. And the coders were like, well, that's okay. We're over here, we're writing code. And it actually might look like that is going to be fully cracked before anything else. Because as we've talked about on the show, code either works or it doesn't. Now it might be more, uh, you can, might, might be able to get it more optimal or more elegant, more secure, yes. Um, and there is an artistry, I believe, capital A art to writing good code. But that said, someone who has no idea what they're doing, someone who is a cat driving a bus, if you're getting the audio version only, I am gesturing to myself, I have been able to use code and uh, coding agents mm -hmm. to make all sorts of products and integrations. And if I need a, an AI voice assistant to go out and crawl the web in real time and return results in a certain way and display them across multiple devices, this would have made me shrug bigly and even be confused as to how to describe that activity months ago. And now I can go build it myself. I'm not saying I can build it great, but I could go build it. I expect that to get leaps and bounds better next year. Well, and that's one of the biggest upgrades with O3, right? We talk about how yes. do we not know how to use O3 or O1 even to try to do those things, but O3 coding is much better. And I think Kevin, to your point, what's interesting, and we've heard people say this over the course of the last year, Coding may not even be coding eventually. It might just be asking for a thing that you want and the computer makes it. And yes, you you would be helpful to be a coder. And I'm not saying that any top level coders are gonna be out of business anytime soon, but you might just be able to ask the thing to make something that you want. And if you can make something that you want, then you have to bring in coders who are really specialized in like making it better and tweaking it and fixing it. But the AI mm -hmm. might be able to do that too, which is kind of crazy. The notion of, of quote, one-shotting entire websites or software suites is actually becoming a reality. That is when you or I or anybody listening to this goes and asks in plain English, here's what I need from a website or from a mobile app or from a backend. And the, the system figures it out does the, the documentation, goes, do, writes the code, writes its own tests, improves upon itself. And that, you know, I think 2025 will be the year of the agent. It's something that it's not a, like a surprise end of the year prediction, but we're already seeing that stuff roll out. So basically when you can give a high level task to the machine and it will break it into smaller tasks, go out autonomously, do those things, improve upon itself, and then alert your phone when it's time, make the Alexa go off or the microwave beep to alert you that your your software is ready, your pizza's been rehydrated. That is, to me, the promise of 2025. Absolutely. So my next big prediction here involves AI video and involves using AI video to make large video projects. And I think you and I both have believed Prompt to Hollywood. We've talked about that a bit here. And we talked about that in our trends episode. But in specific, there was a new project that came out. At least it's been announced. No one, I don't think, has really gone hands-on, hands-on with this called Genesis. 
which does something really amazing, Kevin, and it combines 3D engine generation of like a Unity or Unreal with realistic generative AI. And if you haven't seen this video, I encourage you to go look it up. We'll put a link into the show notes. But Kev, I think this is, you know, one of the predictions of, uh, I think it was um, A16Z said that they expect there to be a Pixar of AI video that would come out of the video game world. And to me, this is what we're kind of looking at. We've talked a lot about world building. We've talked a lot about the idea that AI video is actually a world simulation. When you look at what Genesis is saying it can do, and granted, from what I've read, the compute crunching is insane on it. Like no normal person is going to get access right. to this anytime soon. But they have this incredible video where they show a Heineken bottle and they can zero in on a droplet going down the Heineken bottle. And according to them, it's all being prompted per choice, right? And like that feels like if we can get a suite of AI video tools and ultimately AI world creation tools that comes out, Prompt to Hollywood is really almost here. And, and I think, again, this might be a world where these, this company is so expensive that it sells itself to studios. But if, imagine a studio where the VFX people is a team of five instead of a team of 200 for a Marvel movie. So like that to me is one of the most interesting things I'm really looking at. So my prediction is, is that one of these systems will start to really eat into the, VF the VFX world in Hollywood. And it's going to completely change how major movies are made, not just small ones, but like really large ones. I, I see that sort of stuff also integrating with all of the text to video or image to video tools that we've seen, Gav, where you'll say, I want the horse running on the beach and yeah, go ahead and I'll spend the extra money on the compute so that when the hooves are slapping against the sand or whatever, you're accurately modeling that in some sort yes. of physics simulation. It is, it's so exciting and so fascinating. And I think that we might have, uh, we might have been wrong with our prediction. We were accused of being way too ambitious in a five-year prompt to Hollywood. I think we're going to see a short come out next year that wins some some hardware. Somebody's oh, mantle sure. is going to be packed with something. And then, but I mean, like we haven't really defined you know our AGI when it comes to prompt to Hollywood. Like yeah. we've seen commercials hit TV that are fully AI generated. Have we hit the mark, or does it have to be an an hour and forty-five minute long something that the audience wishes was an hour and thirty? Like, yeah, what do we I, have I, to have? I mean, this is the the other thing that goes along with AI video that I think is another prediction that we can make is is consistency in outputs, right? You saw mm -hmm. already Pika's new uh, drop is supposedly very good at making consistent outputs. I think you're going to see all the major AI video models start to focus on this so that individual characters can be held throughout. I think that feels like a pretty big thing. The the other the next prediction, Kev, I want to make it is around Frontier models because I think the interesting thing about coming out with O3, at least announcing it at the end of the year, is that we always know that inside the halls of these places, they are cooking on something else, right? So there's an expectation I have on Frontier models that we already know we're going to get another meta model. We already know that we're going to get another XAI model. But I would suspect that both OpenAI and Gemini drop these models at the end of the year because they have been cooking on whatever the next thing is, and they've been waiting since the, for the election to drop these things. I really do expect we're going to get a new Frontier models by, say, quarter two of next year. And mm. that's a big deal. It's going to be interesting to see how much of an improvement it is. I think some people would say the O3 benchmarks are like only 25% better than O1, and that doesn't feel like a new Frontier model to them. But I think that's kind of where we're going to be for a while. It's going to be maybe not exponentially better. We're not going to get 100x better. But if you can do 25% better on a regular basis, we are very close to what most people would consider AGI. Yeah. And, you know, you mentioned a couple big companies there and what their behind the scenes frontier efforts are. We left out Anthropic, who has yeah. still by many a best in class coding model, at least. But we'll see what the new Opus or the new Sonnet might bring. Uh, Mistral shouldn't shade them. They're clearly yes. working on something as well and may hopefully open source. You mentioned Meta, a new Llama model, but where's their reasoning model? I bet mm -hmm. it's coming. So, yeah, yeah, there's exciting advancements happening all across the board there. Um, I think AI and warfare not to get too dark and we'll just leave it quick, but I mean, the announcements are coming fast and furious with OpenAI partnering with Andrew. Like, I think we're gonna see military tech advance. I don't know if we will have a bipedal robot in our homes mm. by the end of next year, but I think you'll have the option to. I just mm -hmm. don't know if a lot of people will. Uh, and last but certainly not least, I think another mass hallucination event powered by AI. Like we didn't talk about it too much on the podcast because you and I have been doing some really fun stuff with these UAPs over uh, New Jersey. 
uh, yeah. and some other places. Like we've just been having fun generating those videos and seeing how far they can spread. This is what we got, do, right? Yeah. We, now we can come clean, Kevin. We can come clean before the end of the year. That was all us. We were the we're, we were the. It's UAP a fun groups. bit. <laughs> it's a fun bit, and you know, generating like oh, Congress talking about it and having like it's really easy to do and it's fun. But I think someone who is like less jokey is unfortunately going to wield these tools to do something nefarious next year, Gavin. So I wanted to raise a flag for that. Y'all got to be be aware. But I hope you found our UAP stuff fun. That's right. And the funny thing about those UAP things is like mass hallucination happens without AI a lot of the time too, right? So everybody should be clear on that. Um, okay, that's kind of our quickie episode for today. We want to make sure everybody knows how much we really appreciate you all listening. Please give us a like or a, a thumbs up on YouTube. Also subscribe to the audio podcast. We'll be back next week with a more regular episode. This is a quick episode because it is obviously the holidays. We uh, really do appreciate all you all and we will see you next week after the new year. Happy holidays. Happy new year. Be safe, everyone. 